What's going on on my YouTube buddies? I'm Jacob with another movie review for you guys and continuing on in my series of Billy Wilder reviews. In today's video, I'll be taking a look at the 1970 film, The Private Life of Sherlock Holmes. Holmes and Dr. Watson take on the case of a beautiful woman whose husband has vanished. The investigation proves strange indeed, involving six missing midgets, villainous monks, a Scottish castle, the Loch Ness Monster, and covert naval experiments. So The Private Life of Sherlock Holmes was released in 1970. And yeah, it's really cool to me that Billy Wilder, of all people, got to direct a Sherlock Holmes movie. I think that's pretty neat. It's always a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for somebody to take on such an iconic literary and screen presence like Sherlock Holmes, and Billy Wilder got the chance to do that in 1970. The film, even though it had mixed reviews upon its initial release, has gone on to become a cult classic over time, and the reception for this in today's standards of those who've seen it is generally on the positive side. Uh, I've seen a lot of people consider this a hidden gem in Billy Wilder's filmography. I have seen some rankings float about, and I've seen this in people's top ten lists even, those who really defend this film. Now, my history with Sherlock Holmes, I haven't seen any of like the classic Sherlock Holmes movies. I know Basil Rathbone had a string of Sherlock Holmes movies in the 30s and 40s. I haven't seen a single one of them, even though I know they're fantastic movies pretty much besides this movie the only Sherlock stuff I've seen I've seen the two Guy Ritchie directed films with Robert Downey Jr. which are hit and miss I like the first but not really the second I've seen the at spinoff movie Enola Holmes featuring the fictionalized character Enola Holmes with Henry Cavill as Sherlock Holmes that movie was okay and I've seen a little bit of the BBC series Sherlock with Benedict Cumberbatch and Sherlock Holmes. And I haven't fully seen all of the show, but Cumberbatch is fantastic as Sherlock Holmes in the few episodes I've seen him in. And of course, you can't forget that amazingly criminally underrated Disney film, The Great Mouse Detective, featuring pretty much a mouse detective version of the Sherlock Holmes lore. And I think that movie's awesome. The Private Life of Sherlock Holmes, what makes this one stand apart from other Sherlock Holmes entries is... It takes a deeper dive into the more sensitive side of Sherlock Holmes. It dives upon like an emotional layer that you wouldn't see explored. Kind of like a separation between what he thinks about privately and the public persona that people see him as. Because when you think Sherlock Holmes, you think of the smart genius detective who has this sharp intellect and he deduces everything on the spot and he knows what he's doing. But here we see that in the surface, he's also depressed. He's a cocaine addict. The movie leaves you questioning what his sexual preferences are. There's definitely some stuff within his character tucked deep away that this movie actually does explore. And it actually is really fascinating to see that in a Sherlock Holmes movie directed by legendary director Billy Wilder. This does have the classic Sherlock Holmes stuff in it. You still have a case in the front and center of it. You do see the sharp mind of Sherlock at work. You see the banter between Holmes and Watson, which is always fun to see in any Sherlock Holmes movie. There are some twists and turns along the way. But there's also this melancholy vibe throughout the course of this movie where, yeah, it's fun to watch as it's a Billy Wilder film and there's great comedic banter galore in this movie. But deep down is a deep character study of a flawed and broken man who is the complete opposite of the public persona that people perceive him to be. And I thought that was very fascinating to see explored in this movie. And it makes for a more unique entry in the lore of Sherlock Holmes in cinema. So I had to look it up real quick. Sherlock Holmes in this is played by an actor named Robert Stevens. I'm not that familiar with this actor, but according to the Wikipedia page, there was a point where people were saying he was so good as a theatrical actor that he could be the next Lawrence Olivier. I don't think he hit the same highs as Lawrence Olivier, but 
He definitely has that theatricality gravitas that he brought to this performance, and I really dug his stamp on Sherlock Holmes. I love the rapport that he has with the actor Colin Blakely, who plays Watson in this. Holmes and Watson have always been a great, iconic duo, and it's no exception in this movie. The Billy Wilder-style comedy in here was absolutely hilarious at times. The opening sequence involving a Russian ballet dancer, since this isn't as well-known of a Billy Wilder movie, I'm not going to spoil the joke here, but there's a sequence with a ballet dancer, and the, the Lames Holmes goes to get out of this very ludicrous situation, had me on the floor. This was a hilarious sequence that shows Billy Wilder still continually crafting outrageous comedy sequences, even in the back catalog of his career. Because I feared this would... We were at the beginning of the end with previous entries, with previous movies that I've tackled, like Irma La Deuce and The Fortune Cookie, which I didn't enjoy that much. But there are some legit funny sequences throughout the course of this movie, and the opening sequence was no exception. It was hysterically funny. I also got to highlight some of the other performances in this movie. There's an actress named Genevieve Page, I think is how you pronounce her name, who plays the mysterious woman as we follow in this case. Her husband has disappeared and Holmes is on the trail to figure out what's actually going on. She gave a really good performance and there's interesting layers related to her character as well. And how that dives into Sherlock Holmes' personal story I thought was very fascinating and it dives more into the melancholy vibe that the story goes through. There is a very interesting case in this movie with a lot of weird elements in it. It's honestly one of the weirdest cases I've seen in a Sherlock Holmes movie as it involves the Loch Ness Monster and experimentation on naval warfare and there's mysterious disappearances and all that. It can get pr really weird at times, but I did enjoy the general direction of this story. And I did like the final payoff as well. And I also got to highlight, Christopher Lee is also in this movie. He actually plays Sherlock's brother, Mycroft, in this movie. And Mycroft is a character that I haven't been really impressed by. In previous versions, I thought the character was the most annoying aspect of Guy Ritchie, Sherlock Holmes, The Game of Shadows. And I wasn't a fan of the character's portrayal in the Anola Holmes movie either. But here you got Christopher Lee playing the character, an actor with such class and gravitas and elegance, and he always brings some really amazing stuff to every performance, whether he's a protagonist or antagonist. Christopher Lee playing this character actually made the character more interesting, and I love seeing the back and forth dynamic between two brothers, especially the clashes that these two characters have in their egos, and I really love seeing that in this movie. Going into my negatives, like I said, this movie can get a little bit unbalanced at times because, you know, you still have the comedy aspects that make Billy Wilder movies fun to watch, but you also have the melancholy stuff with Sherlock Holmes and his private life, and they don't really fully gel together. I actually did read that there was a longer cut of this movie. The original cut apparently was three hours long, and because of studio interference, it got cut down to two hours doing my research apparently this was meant to be an anthology film originally you had the opening joke with the russian ballet and the extended sequence with the main case or the two segments that stayed in the final cut of this movie but there were apparently two other segments in this movie diving into the title of the private life of sherlock holmes and those two sequences were cut in the final cut of the movie and unfortunately the footage is considered lost today I don't know if the additional footage would have made the film any better, if it would have balanced some of the tones a little bit stronger, but the version we got I still thought was enjoyable enough. A part of me wished that they can find the missing footage and release like a extended director's cut of this movie, but I'm not sure if that's going to happen or not. But as is the theatrical cut of The Private Life of Sherlock Holmes, it's still pretty good. This is one of the more enjoyable entries in Wilder's later filmography post The Apartment. Not as, not as good as 1, 2, 3, but still an enjoyable entry. It's a unique take on the Sherlock Holmes mythos. It was interesting seeing a more sensitive side to Sherlock Holmes as a character with a lot of flaws and a lot of emotions. And the case in general was a load of fun. 
I did enjoy the comedic aspects of this movie along with the more emotional aspects of this movie. And while I can be a little unfocused at times, it's still an enjoyable movie with a lot of good enjoyment and a lot of good performances and emotional aspects that really make the narrative engaging and surprisingly compelling at times. It's a really good Sherlock Holmes movie that is very much underrated and under the radar. I do highly enjoy this one. I do highly recommend it. I'll be giving The Private Life of Sherlock Holmes a 4 out of 5 stars. And on the 100 point scale, it's getting a 72 out of 100. So that wraps up my review of The Private Life of Sherlock Holmes as part of my Billy Wilder director project where I'm going through his complete filmography from his directing debut to his last film. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you're a fan of Billy Wilder, I'll leave a link in the description below where you can check out my Billy Wilder playlist featuring all the previous Billy Wilder reviews I've tackled on this channel so far. At the time of this video, I reviewed so many of the director's famous works, Sunset Boulevard, Double Indemnity, I did a collab with Ryan Cam on The Lost Weekend, I reviewed Witness for the Prosecution, Some Like It Hot, The Apartment, The Seven Year Itch, and so many others. I'm down to the last four movies in Billy Wilder's filmography, and I'm excited to check them out for the first time. Be on the lookout for more Billy Wilder reviews coming your way. And don't forget to click the link in the description below to check out my past Billy Wilder reviews if you need to catch up on my past videos. Join me next time in my Billy Wilder director project, where I'll be taking a look at the 1972 comedy Avanti, starring Jack Lemmon. I'm excited to check this one out for the first time, so be on the lookout for my review of Avanti coming to the channel very soon. But if you've seen The Private Life of Sherlock Holmes, let me know down in the comments below what you thought of the film. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you mixed on it? But whatever your thoughts are, please be civil and respectful of others. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, click the subscribe button to see more content and the notification bell next to it so you can be notified of future videos. If this is your first video besides movie reviews, I also do TV reviews, ranking videos, and other fun stuff along the way. I have some more videos planned for you soon. Hope you all have an amazing day. God bless, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!